Hi there, Karen Flaherty from Living by Human Design. Hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to be talking about the gate 59, which is typically called the gate of intimacy or sexuality. Okay, so we've got the sending gate 59, which is right here coming off the right side of the sacral, and it's uh, paired with the earth um, in the gate 55, which is down here coming off the bottom of the solar plexus. And uh, it started August 23rd and it goes until August 28th this year. So we start this week with the uh, channel 59.6 all connected. Um, it's the channel of mating because the 59. Um, just came into the sun and the six has been there in Mercury for the last few days. So it's almost done. It'll be done in two days. And then it goes back to being um, a completely open chart. So the sun in uh, gate 58 is called intimacy. Uh, it's also called dispersion or sexuality in the original I Ching. And this is the ability to break down barriers to achieve union. So literally it's this big aura energy that is almost like a spider web. <laughs> When you walk into some new place, anybody with the gate 59 in there, especially if it's in their conscious sun or during this period, or if you've got it really anywhere in your chart, um, it's going to have some effect. Um, but basically it's about finding people to um, procreate with. And so uh, it's got a big aura and it it's always... You know, it's one of those ones not to take personally because it's always there. It's part of our genetic makeup and it's what um, keeps humanity going, right? Um, it's, it's what allows us to keep um, recreating uh, through the genetic code and, and to keep um, having new kids coming onto the planet and basically sustaining uh, humanity. And so it's a very powerful force and it's really nothing to be... Um, uh, to be taken lightly, um, because it is pretty powerful. Um, in the uh, incarnation crosses this week, we got the cross of the sleeping phoenix, this cross of strategy and spirit. And then the gate 55 pairs with it. And this is all about spiritual abundance. Um, so it's abundance or spirit in the original I Ching, and it's abundance that is strictly um, a question of spirit. So it's really everything that comes to us in uh, what we could, you know, frame as a spiritual way. So everything that's on the earth already, the air and the water and the sunlight, right? All of these sustain us. We also have friends and family and um, food and drink and uh, health and wealth. And a lot of these things we don't even have to pay for. So some things, you know, are abundantly uh, um abundantly apparent and abundantly uh, coming to us and other things we do work for, but they can be abundant as well. Um, so it's, it's really about um, bringing things into our lives, attracting things into our lives that are, um, that uh, allow us to keep on going. Um, in the Gene Keys, victimization is the shadow, freedom is the gift, and freedom is also the CD for this one. So in the Gene Key 59, um, what Richard talks about in the graphic is um, the gift of intimacy. And he says the gift of intimacy is the process of one heart opening up to the universal heart. Um, and so this, again, this is a very potent kind of energy in the Gene Key 59, but it is really about bringing people in, attracting um, one another, and, and then, and then um, making the union stick and and really procreating as a result of it. So it doesn't mean that everybody with the 59 procreates, but it does um, have a big influence on mating and reproduction and how things move along in the world. And of course it's it's linked to the um, or you know coming off the sacral, which is all about workforce and life force energy, right? So it's it's totally of the sacral and keeping the keeping the keeping humanity going the shadow here is dishonesty the gift is intimacy and the cd is transparency and by the dishonesty um what he means is the um whenever we're meeting somebody new um you know whether it's one person or more people and we have the gate 59 there's always some fear because the other person may not be completely transparent right that's where the dishonesty comes in and it's that fear that um, really, it, it's kind of funny. It's it's a funny um, chemistry in a way, but the fear is what attracts us, 
right? There's some risk associated with the um, introduction or the or the meeting that that's occurring, and so not knowing, especially you know when it's a brand new person and a stranger, basically, not knowing, having a little bit of fear is the risk and the chaos, so to speak, that occurs during that um, initial interaction that can be um, that can spark a relationship that can spark a, um, you know, a connection of some sort and can lead to intimacy eventually. So um, he also says, we are all one genetic tribe moving through a huge and transformative period in history, the end result of which will be the realization of our unity. So again, this is, um, this is one of the gates that is changing over time as we move toward 2027 and the genetic changes that are going on for all of us and um, and for all the new kids coming in, but it will all eventually lead toward unity. Um, we, the, the fear, you know, if you think back genetically over time, the fears that we see in this gate 59 of the other person, a lot of times have to do with different cultures, different nationalities, different um uh, religions, things that keep us separate are the things that keep us away from other people. And, and, and there are, there are the things that keep the genetic pool such as it is in kind of a separate um, separateness, right? If we were all camp coming together and there was no fear and there was complete vulnerability amongst all of us, we would all already be completely integrated and completely um, basically intermarried with those other religions and cultures and, and countries. That hasn't happened yet, but um, at least according to Richard, he expects that it will happen over the next few hundred years and it will lead to more unity. But it will also lead to more, or sorry, it will lead to less differentiation, um, he also says. In other words, you know, there won't be as many people who look purely Italian or purely, um, um, Asian or purely, you know, any particular nationality that we might be able to, you know, look toward and say, oh, they look, uh, you know, of a certain, a certain way because they live in a certain country. And that may not be the case anymore. That might be, um, it may be at least moving away. And so things will look different. Here we've got a bunch of personalities this week um, in the Sleeping Phoenix, uh, Cross the Strategy and the Cross of Spirit. Um, Leonard Bernstein, Mother Teresa, Sean Connery, um, Althea Gibson, the tennis player, Jack Black, the comedian, Leanne Rimes. Um, I'm trying to think, I mean, I don't see a, a real, um, I mean, each, some of these people obviously had um, some, um, you know, charisma to them that was, that had a sexual bent to it. Um, you know, people like uh, Gene Kelly or Sean Connery were leading men, you know, in, um, in Hollywood. And on the younger side in Hollywood, we've got Chris Pine. So, um, and Shania Twain. So, you know, there's, there's um, a, um, I'm sure a lot of people who have the 59 in their chart somewhere who, who wind up in Hollywood. Um, so today we're going to be talking about Lyndon Johnson, who was the 36th president of the United States. Um, so Lyndon Johnson was born August 27th of 1908 in Stonewall, Texas, um, the son of a local politician. He has a generator with 4-1 profile. Um, uh, he's the juxtaposition cross of strategy, which is a little bit uh, different. He basically had what we when we talk about the profiles as the 4-1, um, we usually talk about it as a kind of a fixed fate. Somebody who came in basically knowing what they were here for and and did it. And um, let's see, in 1908, he was, um, he was in World War II. So he would have been around 32 when he was in World War II. Um, and um, that would have been 1940 to 1945. He was both active and active and then um, in the reserves and became a lieutenant commander. So he was a teacher for a few years after college and in Texas. And then he um, was an aide, a congressional aide, and then got into Congress in 1937. So he actually was in uh, Congress before he was in the war. 
Um, then when he got out of the war, um, by 1948, he was in the Senate. So he's about 10 years, uh, give or take, because of his military service um, in, the, in Congress. And then he moved into the Senate. And so in the Senate, um, he moved up pretty quickly because he became, he, he was very good at becoming friends with the right people, with the right congressmen, the right senators, and um, they liked him and he could basically talk to anybody. <laughs> um, he, he had the gift of gab from what people say, and he had a gift for, um, for finding ways to get things done. So he tried running for um, president in 1960 and was bested by um, President Kennedy, and um, but was surprised when President Kennedy asked him to be his vice president. Um, they did um, win, and um, Johnson took over. Uh, well, he started as vice president, obviously, and then took over when President Kennedy was assassinated on November 22nd, 1963. He finished that term and then ran for president again in 1964 and won that time. The next time he did try um, or started um, the candidacy and then decided not to run. Um, and that's when the year that President Nixon won. What Johnson was um, most famous for um, was passing civil rights laws during his tenure as president, including the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 65, the Civil Rights Act of 1968, but he also started Medicare, Medicaid, the um, higher education um, laws came into effect where students could get loans. Um, and he also was, um, of course, very instrumental in the escalation, unfortunately, of the Vietnam War and uh, especially uh, with the Bay of Tonkin, which became a, a law in Congress, which gave him permission to continue. So while there were very, a lot of things that he did that were um, good for the country and that are in effect till, to this day, and uh, really made a lot of changes, especially with regard to integration of schools and the integration of um, hospitals and, um, and, and the Voting Rights Act, which actually gave, finally gave permission the right to all um, black women, black men, and everybody else. Um, because up to that point, um, you know, for many, many women in this country, 1968 was the first time they voted in a presidential election. And, and that's just, it's hard to believe at this point, because that's not that long ago when, when, um, when that happened. And, and, um, Anyway, he was he was very he was um, forceful. He was persistent, and he he got things done in a way that allowed other people to, um, you know, basically follow him or get out of the way. He was very persuasive, and he liked to um, get things done. So um, let's take a look at his chart. So he's very open um, for, you know, as a generator, he still, he had six different energy centers open. He had three motors and he was very active and had a lot of energy. Um, he had the defined sacral, the defined root and the defined solar plexus. He did have um, just two channels. He had the 952, which is all about concentration, focus and concentration. And then he had the 3955, which is all about provocation and um, is the channel of emoting. And uh, the 55 we've got, which is up in his conscious earth, is all about spiritual abundance. And so I suspect that he really believed that everybody should be equal and treated fairly and um, ha have the rights to education and health care and, and voting and things like that. And he was very provocative in the way he did it. Um, he also had the gate 54, which is all about ambition. The 38, which is knowing what's worth fighting for which he did, and the 58, which is the joy of life. He, he had a, a kind of a, you know, cool Texas demeanor about him, and he had a good time. Um, he had nothing uh, off the head um, center. He had just the gate 17, which is opinions. Um, but, you know, the opinions can get a lot of things done. He had the 16, which is enthusiasm, the 33, which is privacy and retreat, 12, which is um, uh, being careful about your reputation, which um, I'd say he probably was. Um, and he has that. Oh, yeah. Um, he's got that a few times in his chart. 12, 12, 12, uh, three times. 
Um, so being uh, cautious about his reputation, I would say he was. Um, there were um, a number of what would be scandals today, uh, and nobody heard about them until he was out of office, or at least I don't believe people heard about them until he was out of office. Um, he did have the 10 and the 15, which um, is interesting. It was all, it, these are two of the love gates, so the love of the self, um, and he could be very empowering. And he had the 15, uh, both conscious and unconscious. And so he was uh, somebody who had his extremes, but he also had a love of humanity, basically a deep seated love of humanity that really, I think, helped him to achieve what he did. And especially around civil rights. He had the gate 29, um, as we saw last week, is the gate of commitment or the gate of yes. And the 59, um, which allowed him to be um, almost seductive in the way he talked to people. Um, he could, um, in fact, I saw a few pictures um, as I was researching this, that where he was right up in somebody's face when he was talking to them. And, um, you know, it kind of no, um, no uh, boundaries in terms of personal space in those days. And so he would be right up in somebody's face talking to them, um, having their discussion and that 59 would then just kind of envelop them. And they really didn't have much of a choice but to say yes to him. Um, he also had the 53, which is the gate of starting things. And the 40, which is aloneness um, that was in his conscious, uh, or sorry, the, in his moon, his conscious moon. Um, any of the 27, um, which I forgot to mention, also in his conscious moon. So these are motivating factors. Um, aloneness in terms of wanting to um, be with other people and, and um, you know, move into interaction with others. With 27 in terms of taking care of people, taking care of the healthcare and the education and the civil rights and the voting rights and um, Medicaid taking care of the poor. He was the president who started the supposed, uh, supposed uh, war on poverty. And he had a, a real there were, there were a lot of efforts made in that direction. And I'll just mention that um, one of the reasons I think is because I, as I looked at his Chiron, which is, um, which would have been just around 50 years old. And so that would have, yeah, would have come in um, after say 1958-ish, 60, right? Yeah, so just around the time when he became vice president, he and Kennedy were starting, um, oh, and he did uh, continue the NASA programs that allowed for the, um, the trips to the moon and, um, and a lot of um, some of the other programs that Kennedy had started, especially with regard to the arts. The, um, the 49 is um, the eight of principles and it, he doesn't, it doesn't show up here, but he's got it both uh, conscious and unconscious in his Chiron. And so the Chiron is uh, after 50 years old or around 50 years old, when we, we learn the lessons of the, first 50 years, and then we're able to teach and empower others with those lessons after 50 years old. And so he was able to do that as he moved into the vice presidency and, and eventually the presidency and really stick to his principles. His principles were that everybody should be taken care of and everybody should have, you know, food to eat and healthcare and all of that. And, and he, that's, those were his principles and that's what he fought for. And that's what he got. Happy birthday, President Johnson. And um, this week, um, be aware, uh, things might be a little um, uh, more, have, have more of a sexual feel to them than usual. Things might pop up. Things might be um, a little more um, interesting or juicy or <laughs> whatever in your life or in uh, people around you's life. So um, just watch for that. It's always interesting. It's, it's, um, it's kind of funny to see it pop up in your newsfeed or, um, uh, you know, these topics, these uh, different transits each week pop up in the newsfeed or in articles or in opinion papers or things like that. So um, it's always kind of fun to watch for that. So have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.